What's going on guys, Metaver here with Lethal Garage and today I want to talk about the 2020 Camaro LT1. Now when GM announced this, they clearly stated in their marketing, we listened to you guys, we made you a cheaper V8 vehicle. But did they actually listen? What is this car exactly? Let's deep dive into it today. Let's do it. The not so stock 2016 Camaro SS. Well, I have to apologize because when I wanted to set out to do this video, I originally planned to do this as a driving video and it decided to rain a lot. It decided to have a lot of traffic around when I was home and it kind of defeated the purpose of doing a drive video talking about the LT1 Camaro for 2020. Now, a lot of you guys are sitting back. You guys are Camaro fans. You guys have been here whether it came in from the fifth and sixth gen or maybe your dad or uncles or grandfathers uh, were around and loved the early generation Camaros and you carried through and have become a Camaro fan for many different reasons. Now that being stated, if you know anything or nothing about Camaro, one thing to highlight is GM has always offered a pretty wide selection of cars and the American muscle industry was born uh, I would even say before the 60s, but obviously the Camaro and the Mustang filled those roles with the Charger, or Challenger, uh, early on, including many other vehicles that no longer exist, such as the Chevelle and the Nova, and the, I'm not gonna go into a list because some of these you're gonna even already highlight and be like, those aren't American muscle cars. But the idea of an American muscle car was a big motor with a lot of power in a car that didn't have all the frills, it didn't have all the things in it kind of like what we have in the sixth generation Camaro today. The sixth gen Camaro is very much a sports car uh, for lack of better terms. Uh, that being stated, it is the modern day muscle car and a lot of people even say the Challenger is the only true car left. And I disagree because the Challenger comes with just as many frills and bells and whistles uh, and is still in that market. Maybe, maybe the body styling is the only thing that allows it to retain that hallmark American muscle feel, but it's still the big three. Mustang, Camaro, Challenger. That being stated, in the recent releases in the fifth generation, so starting in 2010 when the Camaro came back, all the way to present up until 2020, they haven't really had a blue collar style V8 car. And now that they've announced that in 2020, we are gonna have a lower tier model V8, we're kind of sitting in a situation where we have a slightly cheaper car that finds itself, you know, more expensive or less, ex is it more, less, more, more expensive than a 2LT? I think it's actually less expensive than a 2LT. So basically a fully loaded V6 or 2.0 turbo, um, but obviously um, less expensive than this SS V8. The LT1 is for all intents and purposes, an LT body style, actually it's an LT 2.0 turbo body style, so it's not the RS or anything like that, with some flares from the SS side. Now, you guys may be saying, well, how much of the SS is actually transferring over into the setup? Well, at a closer look at some images, check out these images instead of my face, um, you can see it's clearly an LT body style, but what they've done is obviously in there, they put the V8, motor, which we can't see in these photos. Uh, they put some LT1 badging on it. They did put the SS ventilated hood on the car. I'm assuming they had to do that for uh, many reasons. Obviously, the, the V8 is going to generate a lot more heat than the 2.0 or the 3.6 uh, V6 and um, I4. But that being stated, what else is actually going to carry over to make this car the LT1 or the cheap model V8. And we kind of have to look at the image a little bit to see if it can give away a few details. One of the biggest things is you can see a four pot Brembo brake in these photos. Now we're assuming the photos that they've shared here are the LT1 base model car with no upgrades. I'm even assuming they're gonna limit the ability to upgrade the LT1 uh, LT model V8 Oh God, this is gonna get really hard to, <laughs> to manage. Um, but we don't know. GM hasn't fully revealed everything they're gonna allow because people are asking, well, can I add a 1LE package to the LT1 LT model? I don't even know how they're gonna classify this thing. I guess it's just the LT1 model. Maybe it's not even an LT at all. It's just based on the LT and that's 
it's like the reverse because there was always the one LT and the two LT and then last year they brought out the three LT to make the lower end trim packages a little easier to option out or for people to get better you know exactly what they wanted for different trims but now it's they flipped it actually this used to be something that people used to harass people about on the forums they'd come in and be like I got an LT1 Camaro they're like no you have a one LT Camaro this was back in the fifth gen side but <sighs> Yeah, no, it's been, it's it's confusing. It, it really is. And I'm really happy that GM is coming out with a budget V8. It's still not as cheap as some people would hope, I don't think. And from what I've seen in people's comments, even on my channels or Instagram, they have highlighted, man, it would be nice just to strip out even more out of the car. I don't know how much more they can strip out of it uh, with current modeling and generations. I mean, I think the market is very limited on people who would want a completely just stripped out car with a V8 uh, because they do have to sell a heck of a lot more of these cars. Now, if you go back in the day, obviously I have my second gen Camaro. This actually is a prime example of what GM used to do. Um, this is a standard. So this is a 1971 Camaro standard. What the heck is that? It didn't have the 350, it had a 302 in it. It was a very small V8 motor that made less, I, I think it was 200 horsepower. It was bad. And at that time, it was just a dog of a motor. It was not good. It wasn't good at all, but they sold a ton of these. They sold a crap ton of these. And the 302 motor and the standard Camaro was super inexpensive and it was really easy to get to for people who wanted it. And I still don't think they filled that niche with this new LT1 Camaro, but I do think by lowering the price or it being $3,000 cheaper than a 1SS Camaro, it can open the door a little bit for people who want a little bit more power, but don't care about the features or the amenities. There's like, you know what? I want a car that's gonna drive well and it's gonna have power, et cetera, et cetera. Now, GM has stated the LT1 going in the LT1 is the same LT1. It doesn't sound like it's going to be detuned. It doesn't sound like they're going to do anything crazy, but I'm assuming they're not going to offer dual mode exhaust. I'm assuming you can't get it in a 1LE package. I'm assuming you can't add many upgrades to it because like, I don't think you're going to be able to, they're not going to have like an LT1 2 package or a 2LT1 package where you can get leather seating and all that stuff. I think that kind of defeats the purpose of why this car exists. Um, but I could be wrong. I could be very wrong. Maybe GM just says, screw it. Let's allow this car to be fully optioned, have everything. The biggest question I have is what suspension's under the car? I don't think they can run the standard LT suspension that's on the V6 or the 2.0 turbos. One, they're adding a little bit more weight up front with the V8 motor. And two, with the more power and the car being able to accelerate, etc., they're gonna be handling harder in corners and all that stuff. I'm assuming they have to go with the SS suspension. Now, maybe I missed something in an interview or a release because only the press outlets and news outlets, I had to read a ton of articles to really get all the minutia details around the car. But I don't think anybody's actually revealed nor has GM told us what suspension is on the car. Now, I could be wrong. Maybe I just missed the article where someone asked that question and it's out there. If, if it is out there, let me know in the comments below. Um, but we don't know all of the details. We don't know what GM is going to allow us to completely do with the car, which is unfortunate, but it's understandable because it's early. They haven't rolled out their full plans for the 2020 outside of just revealing basically the, the LT1. Uh, they talked about the new color. We do know what the new color is. Unfortunately, the images are really dark. Here's some new images. If you guys haven't seen the rally green, it looks nothing like the original rally green. I did a video on this earlier. Al Oppenheiser, who used to be on the uh, chief engineer on the Camaro team, who's now since moved off into the electric, I, I forget the new title, but we wish Al and his team the best. But the biggest thing I took away from this is Al is still very much and has always been a very hardcore Camaro guy. Uh, and he still has his hands around the program in some way, or at least that he they let them steal it. They let him steal a car out of the the little factory and he posted some images with his awesome uh dog again check out these photos you can see the green it almost looks black here um it wasn't a very sunny day from the looks of it potentially cloudy or maybe it was just early um but it was it's a dark dark green it's a very dark green color but that being stated the lt1 vehicle 
I do think it's a vehicle that definitely hits the mark. I think it's something that people are gonna be interested. There's a lot of people out there that like the way the 2019 LT looks. And as you guys all know, I've talked about it myself, obviously the SS front bumper in 19, a lot of people dislike. There are some people out there that do like it or it has grown on them over time. But the new SS front end, I think looks night and day difference. Is it gonna make it to where I'm gonna go out and buy a 20? No, I already have my car. I don't need to buy a new one. If I'm gonna buy any new Camaro, it would be a seventh gen. And even at that, I'll probably wait for the ZL1 variant if they plan to do that or potentially a Z28, which we all know they don't release those until the year after the initial launch and potentially years down when they fully mature the platform. So I'm going on tangents here. LT1, <laughs> so base model V8 Camaro does become available. Now we're in May right now. And we all know that new models and everything else start rolling out or start orders start coming in in July and we start seeing cars roll off the blocks in October. Now, that means we are very close to seeing 2020 vehicles start hitting dealer lots, um, seeing more news and information about them. We'll see, I'm assuming press outlets are gonna wanna get their hands on these LT1 cars and that's kind of GM's play marketing wise. Um, I just really hope the marketing team are at least GM gives the marketing team the tools and the money required to really promote this car. I think the changes in 2020 can really help the Camaro brand. I think they'll end up selling more cars. I do think they're gonna have to end up deep discounting these cars even more to compete with Ford and, uh, and Dodge. Because if you guys know, yeah, the MSRP of this car is gonna be lower, but I can walk on any dealer lot, include any Ford lot, any Mopar lot, and their cars are already listed for two, three, four thousand dollars cheaper than MSRP right now. So I mean, yeah, on MSRP, sure, the LT1 is gonna be cheaper, but at the end of the day, it's not gonna be the cheapest car available at launch. I think down the road, couple months when they start doing sales, then that's where the real price war is gonna be because people, they're looking for the best deals. They're not just gonna be like, yeah, I'm gonna go buy that car full price. That, that doesn't happen anymore unless you're completely terrible credit and uh, you can't barter. <laughs> you just, please, if, if you guys are paying full MSRP on cars, go find someone who knows how to barter cars, take them with you, and uh, have them help you negotiate for a better deal. Um, but yeah, that's all I got. Let me know what you guys think. The new LT1 Camaro SS, do you guys think this is a good play by GM? Do you think this car will be successful? Do you think the 2020 lineup, the SS changes, the changes to the LT, the changes in, well, not changes, but bringing out a pseudo model made up of all the other parts is a good call. Uh, GM's not releasing a new car here. It's, there's nothing new about this car. It's all parts from the parts bin making up this version of the Camaro. My question is, is, is this gonna be the lightest, fastest V8 version available? We all know the LT models are lighter, but that has to do with the suspension bits and that has to do with the motors and all that stuff. Is the LT1 gonna get the weight savings at all? I don't think it is. It's gonna still be running the Brembo brakes. It's still gonna have, I think, the SS suspension on it. Um, I don't think there's gonna be much weight savings uh, at all, or very little, if any, just because it's gonna be a strip down, strip -o model, strip down model. I don't know where I'm going with that, but that's all I got. So thanks for checking out this video. Again, guys, let me know what you think. Hit that subscribe button. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, subscribe. <laughs> Lots of Camaro stuff to do. Uh, I am planning to head out to Camaro Fest where these cars are gonna be. I really hope GM brings a whole swath of them. I think the LT1 is gonna be like the key feature car uh, at the show under the tent. So I'm very much looking forward to taking a camera and walking through and really seeing all the bits. Uh, I'm even gonna, I'm gonna try to climb under the car and look uh, to see what suspension bits are on there. Jim will be like, keep him away from the tent. No, I hope not. I, I love what you guys are doing, GM. I just, I really hope it this all works out for you guys because I want Camaro to stay and I really hope the seventh gen is able to make it to the market and blah, yada, yada, yada. So, so many of you guys over there still working on the Camaro brand, making it what it is today and uh, we all appreciate you. So, heads up, keep making awesome cars. And until next time, guys, hope to see you on the road.